Hey, beautiful people, it's Dr. Shade Why You Do, and welcome back to another episode of Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. We have another amazing guest, Trellis Williams, Lady Finance. Just like Lady Luck, we're talking about money today because, listen, we want you to be phenomenal, fantabulous, and amazing when it comes to that F word, also known as finance. We're talking about the taxes, the money that you need to make, and helping you become that six-figure and seven-figure CEO that you truly deserve to be and desire to be, but you need the game plan, so you're in the right place. Trellis, how are you doing today? I am great. How are you? Awesome. And welcome to Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal. So tell us a little bit more about how you decided and became this brand of Lady Finance. Okay. So Lady Finance just kind of developed on its own. Mm -hmm. I was asked to be on a uh, radio show where I was the co-host and I led the panel on finances for single moms and women. And so I had to have a stage name. And that's how Lady Finance developed in 2016 and Lady Finance developed into its own thing, which is so fun, which is where I really focus on women and helping women understand how to really tap into what's stopping them from achieving their financial goals, as well as overcoming a lot of adversity that they've had. Oftentimes women get the short end of the stick, right? Because we wear so many hats and we put ourselves last. And the Lady Finance brand is here to empower, educate, uplift, and have fun when it comes to women in finances. Okay, we're going to break this down because we got some (laughs) questions, okay? You know, this community, we talk to women entrepreneurs and women professionals. And one of the things that holds us back the most, besides confidence and competence, is capital. Absolutely. So, you know, we got to talk to the money ladies and the money team. So when you're working with entrepreneurs, and this maybe they're an entrepreneur that's just starting out and they want to hit that coveted six figures, or maybe they're at six and they want to go to seven. We're going to break that into two because we got different categories. What are some things that you would say to them if they're just beginning and just starting out? One of the things that I would say is, first of all, have a plan Mm -hmm. from day one. If you understand your one, three, five, and 10 year plan from day one, you will avoid making a lot of mistakes, wasting a lot of time, money, tears, blood, sweat, because you have clarity You understand your mission, your vision, your core values, your goals. You know where you're headed. So if you know that you're an entrepreneur and you're just starting and you're walking away from your corporate job and you know that you want to be rich, make your activities equal up so that you can be rich. If you're a mom and you need to buy back your time so that you can have more time for your kids, then build a business around that so you can be home every day at 3.30. Don't set yourself up for failure where you start an entrepreneurship The clients come, the money come, but you have no time. Does that make sense? Because you're working 10, 12, 15 hours per day and it defeats the purpose anyway. So I see a lot of entrepreneurs who start and they don't have a clue about what's happening. They just start, they just show up, they're just winging it, but they don't start to say, I have an end goal. This is where I'm gonna be in three years. This is how much money I'm gonna make every year in my first year of business. I'm gonna start with the revenue goal of X amount of dollars. I'm gonna sell this place. I'm going to go to China. I'm going to take this business international. We're not doing that. As le- That's what I see in the minority community. And oh. that's why I'm here because I have 22 years in the financial industry. And all the years that I've been in the financial industry before I started my own company, I would see where women, people who look like me would struggle with this. This is not anything that just started. Let's break that down. So I know you said you were empowering moms and women. I want to hear more about this. So there's a lot of trauma around money and drama. (laughs) And we're specifically talking about women and you've been in this industry for so long. What are some of the biggest mistakes and challenges that you're seeing women make when it comes to our money? Okay. All right. So that's a lot to unpack. Let's do it. That's what we're here for. One of the biggest mistakes that I see that women make when it comes to money is first, not understanding your relationship to money. Mm. Bringing in childhood traumas into the relationship with money. Uh, Furthermore, into the relationship with business, work, and all relationships, which ultimately affects how much money you make at the end of the day. I wholeheartedly believe that how much money you make is directly connected to how you feel about yourself. Mm, mm. I'm going to say that again for the ones in the back. I wholeheartedly believe that how much money you make is directly connected to how you feel about yourself. Meaning, are you afraid to take those opportunities? 
Are you afraid to put your, to, to follow your vision? Are you afraid to invest into yourself? Are you not headed where you need to because you won't invest, mm. right? Are you, are you allowing self-sabotage? Are you allowing whatever has happened in the past to stop you from moving forward? So that's just to name a few. I want to break down. What are some of these common money stories we probably tell ourselves that we grew up with that I know like money doesn't grow on trees. Mm -hmm. I know there are some common ones. You don't got McDonald's money. I said it to my niece today. I was like, you got DoorDash money? And I'm going to send it to her regardless. But I was like, I thought about that when I said it this morning. What are some of these things that um, you've heard over and over? Some of these sayings or phrases that we thought were normal but are detrimental to our money mindset? Um, using the word can't. Mm. Using, giving the word can't too much power. I mm. can't. I can't. Just, just take that out of your vocabulary. Okay. Mm. First of all, I see, I, so I mentor many women and with my digital business and finance bootcamp, I've at least 60 women have been in my class and I've had several transformations. I'm talking mm. about going from 480 credit scores to 800 credit scores, not believing that they could become a homeowner to purchase in their homes, not understanding mm. how they're running their business, feeling like they're the help in their business and not the CEO. And now they show up as the actual visionary and not just the help. So one of the things that I see is that women don't believe in themselves enough. Mm -hmm. They don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. They don't feel qualified or they will feel like that's not for them. So oftentimes I'm seeing where they're not showing up to the table to play big from day one. Mm -hmm. OK, they're not showing up to the table. So our count counterparts, I worked in the banking industry for many years. OK, I managed the banks. Um, some of our counterparts, when they start a business, they know from day one that their business is going to make three million dollars in year one. And they know that in year two, they're going to scale to six million. And then in year three, they're going to scale to 10 million. And then they're going to sell that business for 20 million dollars. They start like that. Oftentimes, what I am seeing is that we are just there to provide a service in exchange for money. Does that make sense? We don't have a game plan to 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 scale it or to sell it. Correct. That's a whole never con Correct. conversation. Or willing to do the work to what I call get your sweet honey and iced tea together so that mm. you can come to the table. In 2024, yes, we have um women are not getting access to capital as needed, but I will share that during the pandemic, we've been able to have more access than we've ever had before. And many people are not able to get the proper access because they don't have their paperwork in place. They don't have a solid business foundation. They don't have their sweet honey and iced tea together. And that's why I developed my curriculum. Okay, well, this is this is good. <laughs> so like you, ta you talked about working in the financial sector for years and watching how other people start their businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say of a probably of a non-melanated persuasion. Correct. They're, how they're starting their businesses with the foresight to say, we're starting it. This is how much we're going to make. We're going to make millions. Like there's no, no doubt about it. And we're going to sell it for millions. Recently, was it B of the honey pot? 380? 380 million. Okay. Million. Okay. Talk to her nice. Talk to her nice. Kudos to that. And even with that, her selling her stake in the honey pot to, to, to acquire 380 million, there were people in the comments that said, oh, she needs to, why is she selling? She's selling out. How do we even get to this idea of we're supposed to create assets and businesses that are sellable, but when people get to that opposition to have acquisitions and happen, there's this negative talk about, oh, she shouldn't have did that. Why does she do that? How can we shift that mindset? Because that, that's that, a money okay. blocker for people okay. who are trying to take it to the Ooh, next I'm level. I'm so happy you got here. Okay, so first of all, businesses are here for profit. We are not supposed to get emotionally attached to a business. Mm. This is why we see businesses that were thriving and they're no longer thriving and they're still holding on because they are emotionally attached. Instead of saying it is time to put a price sale and sell this business for $800,000, get up on your cash, okay? Have your cash, start something else. If you did it once, you should be able to do it again. 
But there's this emotional connection. There's this emotional attachment that we're not supposed to sell when that is the opposite reason of why businesses are here. Okay, we can even purchase other businesses from day one. Oftentimes, this is another mistake that I see. Too many people want to start from ground zero without any experience. I just asked one of my clients, I said, hey, do you feel that you are capable and qualified to be the CEO of your company? She said, yes. I said, well, do you have any experience on a C-suite level for any company you've ever worked for? Mm -hmm. She said, no. I said, well, how much leadership and management experience did you have? Not any. So are you shooting your business in the foot from day one? Mm -hmm. Because you've never been in leadership. You've never, or you've been there for less than two years. You've never been in the C-suite level. So you've never ran anybody else's company. And now you're here and you're the CEO of your own company and you don't have a clue about what the CEO does. So are you going to put yourself in position to get the education and the skill set, the knowledge and the experience of what it takes to be a CEO? And if not, Mm. then let's give your business a fair chance because you may not be qualified. And that might be why the business is not is not thriving. Woo! I just need you guys to like pause and that's not to hurt anybody's feelings and rewind okay. it and get your nuggets. OK, <laughs> you might not get it today. You might get it next week and come back and watch it again. So there's just so much to unpack. So another nugget that you talked about was we don't have to build from scratch. And I think that's we what we don't. think in our heads. We don't we don't we got to build, build it. Scratch. We can buy a building, a business that's already profitable. Making money that has a proven success and track record, and we can just pull our money together to purchase that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, that's where the next iteration of my life and business is going. I'm looking at, okay, what can I buy? Because that seat, and and it's like once you expand, and one of the things you said was you got to get the education and the knowledge and the and the competency to even know that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to our money mindset that we got to get everything out of the mud. Nobody's handing us anything. We got to go get it. When in reality, you can buy somebody's business. So I know that that is something I'm looking to do. Think about this this. decade that another company that has already been in business for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, they've already had, they already have a brand, a great brand reputation compared to you where nobody knows you. Right. And so you have to go through the building stage. A lot of entrepreneurs don't even understand the difference between building a brand, raising brand awareness, understanding what it's like to build brand credibility rather than just generating revenue. They're all different. They're all relative and they're all required, but it takes time. So if I go and purchase a Smoothie King, Smoothie King already is, is well known. They have okay. the SOP. Smoothie King it has place. already has the infrastructure. They've already have a proven system that works. Everybody knows Smoothie King. Okay, so do you see the difference? And so we don't necessarily have to always start from scratch. We don't have to always think that we have to reinvent the wheel. Let's just go and and, and build from what somebody else has already done. And then you take your expertise, your knowledge, your experience, and you build upon that. Now, everyone can start their own thing, but it's not a coincidence that black people have more businesses, but their their average income is less than $100,000. There's not a coincidence there. Okay. And so we need to understand what it is that we need to do to position ourselves so that we can come to the table and we can play big ball. Let's play this big ball. (laughs) I want to talk about this. You talked about brand awareness and building brand credibility, but I want to talk about it in the context of your industry, finance industry, because there's a lot of people on the Internet, on the podcast, Mm -hmm. on on the social media streets that portray themselves as financial experts. And I'm pretty sure you know some names. We're not, we not saying nobody's mm-hmm. name, mm-hmm. but you name it. They're, they're talking about these topics, but they don't have the years of expertise that you have. Correct. So when someone, someone has opened, maybe there's a, a, someone watching and they're like, man, I really want a financial expert. I want someone who has a higher level understanding and knowledge of money, finances, and taxes. What advice would you give someone who's looking for that person, but they're seeing these other people online that might not be as credible? Like, how do we spot the people that's not as credible? Let's talk about it. Well, great question. So what I look for is I'm not looking for popularity. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
popularity and likes and things like that. That's not what I'm looking for. That doesn't make somebody an expert. First of all, how many years have you been in this industry? And if you're a business owner, how many years have you been in business? And can I verify how long your business has been open? And can I verify that you have a real business? Okay. So can I verify that you have a location that I can walk into? Can I verify certain things that certain businesses must have in order to be considered credible? Okay, let's start there. In addition to that, in order to be considered an expert, you have to have so many plus years in the industry. Okay, what's your proven success? And I'm a big fan of discernment. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of discernment. In the financial industry, there's so many different chapters and topics we can cover. You're not going to be an expert in every single field. I understand it's important that you meet somebody that's honest. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to portray the image to be an expert in everything, but what I am an expert in, I know what I know, what I know, what I know. All of my clients will stand up and say, yes, this is what she's helped me in. And if I don't know it, I'm going to say, we're going to need to bring another key player on the team. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to pretend that I know how to grow two, three million dollars in a stock market, but I will say it's time to diversify your portfolio. Okay. It's time to diversify your portfolio and it's time to bring in an advisor who specializes in this particular area because this is what you need at this time. Does that make sense? Yes. But we're not going to go just based on the popularity and, and who's on to the, the wave at this time. OK, this is really, really good. And one of the things that really shows like higher level intelligence is someone who's credible is your ability to say, you know what, I'm an expert at what I'm an expert at. And I also don't know some things. Also, I will tell you this. Um, who are they partnering with? Are they and partnering, the partnership piece? Are they partnering yep. with other social media experts or are they partnering with corporate companies? Credible sources, okay. companies. And we gotta be, you know, we came out of and, and and this I think this is an important conversation, especially because this is gonna be on social media and people are gonna be looking and and and, and Googling information. Maybe you were looking for financial support and this came up. Hey, welcome. I think that's so important, especially we came out of 2020. There was all this money that was poured out into the marketplace and then it dried up. Inflation and all kinds of things happened. And then, you know, I call this the season of where the real experts, please stand up because <laughs> the other ones got to sit down because their money is funny. PPPs are not PP and PN like mm -hmm. they used to. Correct. And the EDILs is, is due. The rent is due. Correct. So let's talk about some of those cautionary tales. Like some people were able to truly grow in this season. But what are some things that we're seeing? Like you talked about just surviving 2023, right? Yeah. We still here. God is good. <laughs> let's talk about that because that's, a, you know, that's the offset of some of the things that happened between 2020 and now. So what were some of the things that you like major challenges or differences that you saw in 2023, but as we go into 2024, what are some things we need to pay attention to? So some of the challenges. Okay, so um, the pandemic money is gone, as she mm -hmm. said, right? No more child tax advance credits, no more $1,000 per week unemployment, no more PPP, no more EIDL, no more any of those things, okay? And so what we're seeing is that people have to go back to the basics to run a real business, okay? People are mm -hmm. going back to the basics to run a real business now. And for those who don't understand what it takes to run a real business, we're seeing their businesses dry up because what worked in 2020 and 2021 does not work in 2023 and 2024. The marketing doesn't work. The tips don't work. People are tired of the fluff. Okay, so all of those people who went and rented stuff to portray this image, people have caught on to this. Okay, and now we're like, we need the real thing. What I would suggest is this. If you made more money than you've ever made in a pandemic, understand that it was because many of the corporations were down. So we had a lot of small mom and pops. It was our time to rise up. That's great. If you didn't use that window of opportunity to maximize on it, it's time to build a solid business foundation. It's time to go to real business principles, understand what's needed and run a real business based on integrity, based on value, based on customer service, based on being the best in your industry, your skill set. And when you realize that you don't have the experience or the skill set, it is time to educate and empower yourself with the knowledge so that you can rise up and um, service your clients, okay? What we are seeing in 2023 is that people went broke. 
I'm seeing that people were suffering in silence and they're still suffering in silence and they're embarrassed because Ooh. they balled out of control in 2021, in 2022, and in 2023, things dried up quickly. Okay. And we're seeing, we're seeing businesses close their doors. We're seeing people pivot. We're seeing entrepreneurs go back to a nine to five, which is not a bad thing. Okay. But we're seeing that a lot of it has been short lived. I've kept my doors open for 10 years, never closed my doors, multiple locations. Okay. Same phone number. If we moved into a new location, everybody knows where it is. Okay. Now understand that you may need to pivot. You may need to say this doesn't work. And just because one thing didn't work doesn't mean that the next thing isn't going to work, but you can't just hop and hop and hop. That's called hustling. At some point, you have to become a business owner or you have to understand that you're not ever going to be a business owner and you're simply going to be self-employed. And that's okay if you choose that as well. Okay. What I am seeing in 2024 is that people need to bounce back. If you need to find yourself bouncing back, what I will say is don't be ashamed, but do not continue living a lie. If you know that you can't afford those things, it's going to bring you to ruin. Don't, it, it, don't continue to do that. Trying to portray an image, okay? Don't want to purchase these things to be like the people on social media because you're competing with the lie. Most people are not going to tell you that that's not their real life and that's not really happening. What it is that their their five seconds or their 60 second videos, that's not really what's happening. So for those of you that need to bounce back, you want to understand budgeting. It's no longer spin a check and get it right back. Not in, that's over in 2023. That's over in 2024. Okay. And even if you are still thriving, that's good, but it is time to budget and hold on. It's time to make smart in healthy financial decisions. It is no longer okay to be foolish with your money. We are in an economic downturn and it is not expected to get better. I don't care what they say. It's not expected to get better right now. Yes, it will get better, but it is time to identify what's your relationship with money. Is it toxic? What are those behaviors? Do you continuously find yourself up and then down, up and then down, up and then down again. Okay. If that's a situation that you're in, then it's time to evaluate and reevaluate, reassess what it is that you're doing and get rid of those toxic behaviors. Woo. Mm. I can keep going, but I was, I, going I was like, I'm about to throw okay. my shoe over there. <laughs> I said, I felt okay. that. Listen, I was like, yeah, we got budget a budget is important. Okay. Big B budget. Take yeah. your money and put your money into things that's going to make money work for you. Okay. Put it into things that's going to make make it work for you. Make sure you have your emergency savings accounts for your personal as well as your business. Make sure that you understand what it takes to truly begin building wealth. Understand that we're always going to go through the highs and lows of an economy. OK, most of America right now is down, but people are losing their minds. They're committing suicide. Mm -hmm. People are divorces at an all time high. OK, people are feeling less than because their money is funny. I will tell you, if you did it once, you can do it again. Give it to God and this time do it the right way. Ooh, if you did it once, you can do it again. Mm -hmm. I love that. We have some another podcast guest who, who who's lost millions and she's on the road to doing it again. And I said, and I said that too. I said, you can do it once. You can do it again. You can do it again. Your, your mind doesn't forget you how can. you did it. This time, do it the right way. Do it the right and way. And identify what went wrong. What do you need to start, stop, and finish? I will tell you, if you don't have a good tax plan in place, you will wind up owing the IRS millions of dollars Ooh, or you'll owe them money that. that you can't get out of, okay? And you won't take advantage of the tax breaks that you can get as an entrepreneur, okay? There's so many different things. You want to make sure you have your credit you, that your credit, your personal credit can stand up for your business. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that you do understand the importance of OPM, which is other people's money. But at the end of the day, I did a vision board in t uh, December 28, write the vision and make it plain. Mm -hmm. We can do as many vision boards as we want. We can come up with our own plans. But at the end of the day, if it's not God plan, it doesn't, if it's not God's plan, it's not going to work out anyway. Okay. So seek God in alignment and be in alignment with what his plan is. And this, and you may not find yourself in a situation where the money comes, but it goes so fast. I hear so many people say, I can't believe I made that much money. Where did it all go? Okay. So learning how to master your money and not look for where your money went. I love it. Even me as an entrepreneur, I know you just celebrated 10 years in business and I'm celebrating 
10 years this year. And I, and some of the things you, like they're right on target, like, okay, now we was playing around in business. We got to run a real business. Uh-huh. I don't know how I got here to 10, but we, we got to do a real <laughs> thing now. Right. Because it feels like I was just playing on the internet, but now actually running a real business, looking at P&Ls, understanding Mm -hmm. taxes and making sure I'm being more fiscally responsible, budgeting. I know Beyonce said the big B stand for bands, but in our case, it stands for budgeting. (laughs) So making sure I'm being more cognizant and aware of this and understanding that you can bounce back. And I, I love the things and not even just understanding your personal finances. And your business finances and understanding that those are two things. Right. Stop co-mingling, folks. Correct. They are two separate things. What are some, so for the people, because you have, you're, you're working with entrepreneurs. You've been able to work with over 600 entrepreneurs and help them get to their six and seven figure goals. What are some, like, how, do, how does someone know or how do you know from the financial perspective of working with them? that this person is about to hit seven figures. Like maybe a year before, six months before, you're like, okay, this client is on the trajectory for six, seven figures or eight figures. Like, how do you know? Okay, so in order to know, first of all, you need to understand the market research of what's mm-hmm. happening with the product in the industry that you're in. You also mm-hmm. want to understand your projections. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when it comes to financials, not just looking at what you did, but what are the projections with including in your outreach, your ideal clients, okay, your marketing budgets, your sales team, your marketing team, all of these different things. And based on the projections and what the industry is doing, based on what you did before, what is it doing now and where can it go if you have the right tools in place? So that's how we come up to say, okay, we're headed for this. We're looking at what did you do in the last three quarters, in the last four quarters, what did you do in the last two years? And wh- how how much are you increasing? And what are your current projections expected to be in 2024 and 2025? And if you don't know what your projections are, then you b- definitely want to take my class. Um, it's a digital class because we talk about that. We cover the profit and loss. We cover the income statements, the balance sheets. We cover all of those things and just really understanding your buying power as well on a tax return. You know, oftentimes it's tax season. Most people want to write off everything and take away their buying power, which is Mm. why we see so many people, so many entrepreneurs in our community have worked so hard and so long, but they don't own anything. Okay. Mm. Because at the end of the day on paper, they can't afford it. And they didn't sit down with someone to say, these are the things that we need to do so that you can meet your financial goals. You need to introduce a new product, a new service so that it can generate you another $30,000 per month. And you're going to take this and move this here so that you can ultimately reach your goal. It's called cash flow, increasing your cash flow. So this is higher level strategy that you're sharing. Yes. Strategy and math. I heard strategy, math and marketing. Yeah. You're like, what do you, what is your marketing budget and looking hand. like? And in what is, what are your projections looking like? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people think, especially when we see it on the internet, that this is made from magic. Like the millions just came out of the thin air. They didn't. When there's actually strategy in marketing, mathematics that's happening. Someone said, uh, I was at an event. They were like, don't don't try to mystify this. It it was math. It was math and marketing. Yeah. So I love how you are partnering with your clients to pair the financial piece with the other parts of business. So let's talk about some of these courses because you know we like digital products and courses on this side of the internet. (laughs) So tell me a little bit more about your curriculum and how you're a financial educator and teaching people some of these principles that we've talked about today. Okay. So in 2020, when most of America was shut down, I was Mm -hmm. helping clients giving free webinars on how my clients and and people that they were uh, referring could keep their doors open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. business was shut down and this was their livelihood. I created a curriculum called the business and finance bootcamp. I teach it live, but it's also digital. It's a digital course. And everything that would stop someone from getting access to funding that would get them denied for grants and funding, I created a course to help them that teaches them ultimately how to get their foundation in place and be by default become bankable. Mm. So everything that would get you denied for funding, we go through that course and you get it in place, you get it in order, but it's really called building a solid business foundation. So Mm. everything from your mission, your vision, your core values, your one, three, five, 10 year plan. Are you structured properly from a legal standpoint, your operating agreements, your agreements, even when you, you know, take photos, you're supposed to have them sign a document where you Mm. own the photo. 
Okay. Understanding marketing versus branding your personal credit, because if you can't manage your personal finances, you can't manage your business finances and you're going to lose the the ball on the funding if you can't manage your own personal finances. So going over your personal finances and your business finances and everything that you need financially from a business standpoint and your business plan. So at the end of the course, by default, you should become bankable. I love this. How can our audience stay connected to you? You guys can stay connected with me by following me on Instagram and social media platforms, lady underscore finance. Okay. My website is www.lady-finance.com. And then my umbrella company, Financial Experts of America is Financial Experts of America on all platforms. On all platforms. What's one piece of financial advice that you would leave for our lady entrepreneurs? Maybe it's for that single mom or that person who's just starting their business or someone who's like, I'm ready to give up. And I, I, I just stumbled upon this video. What's that word of wisdom or financial advice? You I would give? say, ladies, first of all, don't quit. OK, you can't be a victim in a champion in the same space. You have to pick one. I choose to be a champion. Okay. Second of all, second of all, believe that you can rewrite the ending to your story. Third of all, all you have to do is show up and be willing to do the work, but please seek the help that you need and stop trying to do everything yourself. You need to get someone that can help guide you when it comes to business and you need to have an accounting and you need to have an attorney. Every entrepreneur, every small business owner needs to make sure that you have three people on your team an attorney, an accounting, and a great business coach. And I'm going to add Jesus to that too. Put oh, God that's on your a, side. That is, that's on top. <laughs> that's okay. on top. That's, that's on first. top. That's the, that is the first. And I would say if you're starting over, you're feeling like you want to give up, I would say don't. But what I will say is start where you are. Most of the information is on Google, but you can't Google a business. You can't Google how to run a successful business, but the information is out there. Position yourself for success. Get with a community of people that's willing to propel you forward, that's willing to share and not gatekeep the information, that's willing to pray for you because you need prayers, okay? And that's willing to help you build a business because it's the same way it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to raise a successful business. Oh, it takes a village to raise a successful business. Absolutely. I like that. So we're going to have you introduce yourself. You can look in your camera. I think this is your camera. Introduce yourself and tell us why your brand's a big deal. I am Trellis Delandro Williams, CEO of Financial Experts of America and Lady Finance. My brand is a big deal because I have impacted over 600 entrepreneurs who look just like me and helping them create, go from surviving to thriving in business and our personal finances. And girl, your brand's a big deal. So thank you so much for being here for another episode of the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. We can't wait to see you in the next episode. Have a great day, beautiful people.